Bastonia, North Carolina. We're so excited about you being with us tonight. We've got a special guest again tonight. Thank God for it. We've got uh, Brother Steve Bishop and his wife, Frieda, from Faith in God Ministries. Uh, most everybody knows them, but if you don't know them, you know her dad, Brother Lloyd Morgan, who's been our missionary for uh, 30 plus years. I've been here 42 years, and we had another one for a little while, and I said we need to get somebody we know. And so we got Brother Morgan, and I think it's been over 30 years that we've supported this ministry. It's done a great ministry. I want you to be a part of it tonight if you can. If you'd like to, uh, you know, feel the need when he's speaking to, to do the offering. Uh, we don't have the credit card things and everything that the big churches has, but you can get the address off the screen or get it off of our Facebook if you're watching by streaming. And uh, they will appreciate anything you do for the mission. They're going to go down next month, take a bunch of creek bags that we've got. I'm not sure how many we have. We unloaded the truck. We've got some more that's come in, and we got a box right there if you have any more to put in it. We just appreciate that. Uh, worship with us tonight as we worship together. Uh, uns we, we kind of have some many special meetings lately, but unspoken requests that God's in here. We've got a whole list here. Got people in the church that need prayer. Got a prayer line lit up yesterday and today, so there's a lot of people on it. And uh, so let's just pray for all of these tonight. Anybody have one you want to speak? We'll give you a chance. Tyler, you've got a report put in. You got a date and set when they're going to start that? Monday the 1st. Monday the 1st. We're going to start the chemo. We prayed for her. She had uh, colon cancer and they removed it. Felt like they got it all. It hadn't spread. The report was real good. But they want to err on the side of caution and uh, go ahead and give her some chemo. And I think they're going to give her some and check it and see. Yeah, she, she also did say she said they did, she verified what everybody else said, but they, they did get it and just making sure they ain't no cells floating around. But God touched me. God touched me. Amen. You've got to Amen. 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 Didn't see no more cells, but they checked again, and she was the, the, the specialist agreed with the other doctors. And they just felt like it, just to make sure if there's any cells floating around. That's the way we all we were saying in our life. We ought to give it to word. Amen. Amen. And to say, we just make sure there ain't nothing floating around in there that's wrong. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Peter, I, I've really been trying to work on that. Anybody else want to pray? Y'all just remember me and my family, my lost loved one. Sister Marcia? Remember Faith. She broke her foot again. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> so just keep her in your prayers. Tommy's wife had been shot yesterday, and she's had a bad day today, but she said she just hadn't even gotten a rest, but then all of a sudden, it started getting better this afternoon, so uh, she's not with us tonight. And we're praying for her. Amen. Sister Gail, anybody else is out? Good to see Harvey. I'm sure. On the back from their vacation. Uh, did I miss somebody? Marsha, I think. Marsha. Ralph. Somebody over here. I'm sorry. Ralph. Ralph. Brother Ralph. Go ahead, brother. Sure. I remember her. For sure. We've been praying for him today. We've been praying for <coughs> Brother Ralph. And Shirley and Roy and Pat, good to have them here. And Sister Annie, we just appreciate you. I've tried to call your name before the Lord today, sometime today. I don't think there's anybody that comes here uh, any regularity at all without having to talk to the Lord for you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Believe that God's going to make it for you. Amen. Anybody else tonight? Brother Tommy, come on. Brother Tommy's going to come with a song, and uh, then to give them plenty of time. All the singers said they'd rather hear them tonight and uh, give them plenty of time, so we're going to let them come just as quick as uh, uh, we're through. I'll come back and take the offering. Uh, let Tommy just come on tonight. I tell you what, you just go ahead and take the offering. I'll come back after you through, okay? All right. Praise the Lord. And we pray. Everybody say it. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another opportunity to be in your house tonight. Pray for this service tonight, Lord, to just reach down and touch it, Lord God. I mean, you need to be people, Jesus. Pray for the speaker tonight, Lord God. You anoint them, bless them, Lord, as they bring us the word, Lord. We thank you and praise us for that, Lord. Pray for the sick, Lord, that you touch their bodies, heal them, and uplift them, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done for Toddy, Lord. Continue to keep your hand on her, Lord. We thank you for that, Jesus. For the ones that's missing tonight, Lord, go where they're at, touch them, uplift them, Jesus. Praise the going to the world.
worship service tonight, Lord, that your will be done, Lord. We give you the praise and the glory and the thanks to you. Amen. And we can turn to page 110 and be on the board. Thank you, Lord, for
And so we're not going to hold them late, but we'll stay as late as they want to because we'll all be home in the bed before they get, before they get home. So uh, they ain't got to worry about us tonight. So I'll just go ahead and obey the Lord. We appreciate them. Thank you for giving tonight. Thank you for giving to them. We'll let them go ahead and get ready and I'll be out of the way here. But uh, just uh, worship with them and, and, and pray for them while they sing. Uh, they blessed us so much last year. And we want them to sing all they want to sing and preach all they want to preach and just obey the Lord. We'll have a good time in the Lord. So we'll let Donnie stream it with us. Worship. Call your request in or text them in. Donnie will get them at the end. Amen. 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 Amen.
I thank the Lord because I serve a God that is big enough. Amen. He's big enough. He is big enough yes. to calm yeah. all the troubled waters that this life may put my way. Okay. He's, he's big enough to give me the peace that I need. And the day that we're living, you've got so many people looking around. So many people are struggling. They're fearful. They don't know what to do. But I serve a God. And if you know the Lord, you serve a God that's big enough to handle any situation that may come my way. Just a few days ago, well, a couple of weeks ago now, I had a man call me for prayer. He said, Steve, I don't know what to do. He said, it seemed like life is closed in on me. And I've heard that more than once like this year. Life is closed in on me. I don't know what to do. I need prayer. You know, I want to know there's some hope. Somewhere there's hope. And I explained to the Lord Jesus Christ, this is the only hope. He's the only hope you can have in this life. It's the Lord. He said, but everything's closed in. He says, he said, my wife's sick. He said, my job's in and out. He said, I just don't know what to do. He said, the doctor bills are piling up on me, and I don't know what to do. He said, I need somebody to help me with some prayer to give me some faith. You know, the Bible says, just take a little bit of faith. Just a grain of the mustard seed. Right. That's all I need. He also said, he gave every man the measure of faith. I believe, if you know what a mustard seed is, we'll be time to see. I like to think of mustard seed, you know, mustard seed. I like to think of it as a little grain of pepper. Not the biggest grain of pepper. You know, that's all the faith that you need for the Lord to lead you through. The Bible says, if you got just that little bit of faith, then all you got to do is say this, take a mind tree, he's planted in the seed, if you get up there, be planted in the seed. That's what the Bible tells us it would be. And I'm going to tell you just a little bit before we get started with the message. I want to go just a little bit about what we're doing. You know, everybody knows about all the situation going on in Haiti right now. Haiti's in a rough world. They're worse than they've been in a very, very long time with the gangs taken over and the president been assassinated. And the gas right now, if you can find it in Haiti, it's $25, if you can find it. They have very little gas. And their grocery shelves are the same way. They've got very little groceries on the shelf. And it's all because of the gangs. They won't let food come in. They won't let gas come in mm -hmm. to get to the places where it needs to go. But this, this past year, last year, Pastor's already said, we went to Mexico on a mission trip last year. And last year was a little bit uncertain on how things were going. You know, because of by being election year, and we're going to be gone on election day. And because of the COVID, we didn't know how things were going to work. We got it across the border. But you know, God was in our midst the whole time we were gone. The whole, when we were there, I saw more souls this past year come to know Him yeah. than I've seen in a very long time. Amen. Because people had a hunger. Amen. They had a hunger. They knew they needed something. It reminded me of the woman at the well. She knew she needed something, but she didn't know what she needed. She was looking, she was looking for love, she was looking for love in all her own places. No, but Jesus said, I must need go through Samaria. He knew that woman was going to be there. Right. He knew that she needed what he had to offer her. Amen. Even though she had no clue. So he, the Bible said he just went and sat on that well. So she came by there about lunchtime. He said, he, he started up the conversation with her. He didn't wait for her to conversation with him. Uh, you know, Jews and Samaritans, they just did not get along at all. So he said, give me a drink of water. I'm paraphrasing that one. He said, give me a drink of water. She, I, can, I can see this woman now. She goes to him and says, who in the world do you think you are? That, that's these verses. Who in the world do you think you are? You asking me for a drink of water? I'm a Samaritan and you a Jew. You know, we have nothing to do with you. And Jesus told her, he said, if you know who was asking you, you would have asked him. He would have gave you that living water. You know, and he gets her attention. She said, give me that living water. You know, before she get that living water, she had to get her attention to draw. He had to draw her attention to her sin. Because you can't have a living water and living sin at the same time. You can't do both. You need living sin or you have that living water. He got her attention. He said, go call your husband. She said, I'm not married. He said, oh, you told the truth there. He said, you've already had five of them. And the one you got now is not yours. That you just living with them. And she, she said, oh, you must be a prophet. She said, I know the size coming. He said, I know me. She said, he's going to tell us everything. She said, I know me. And he, he says, I'm the Messiah. And she goes, she leaves her water pot, the Bible says. She goes back to the town. She finds all those men. She says, Come and see a man that's told me everything I've ever done. You know, I was I was reading this the other day and the thought hit me. Why is she gonna tell all the men? And they said they all came out to see Jesus. Yeah. You know, I was thinking, you know, Mabel came out to see Jesus and he told her all that she'd ever done. They wanted to that their name was brought up. That's why right. I, when I read that, it popped my mind. You know, Mabel right. wanted to say, hey, did he say something about me? And I want to find out. You know, the Bible said many came to know the Lord because of her testimony. Come see a man that told me all they ever done. But then after Jesus talked for a while, a couple of days he stayed there, and more came to know him off of his things. 
they went to one of them. But you know, that's what it reminded me of whenever we talk, going through here in the time, all we've been, all we've been doing this year in COVID, how that, I wasn't sure how anybody was coming out of the service. And people had that hunger. It's like that one of what she had a hunger. She was looking for something. They had a hunger. And the soul that came to know the Lord, you know, I keep thinking of You say, would it happen if you hadn't been there? It could have. You know, but I thank God he allowed us to be there, to see the souls that were saved. Amen. You know, so we, we're going back to Mexico again this year. Actually, brother, we're leaving Sunday after church. It's coming to Sunday after church. And we're going to be, Lord willing, we're going back in again. I've already talked to the missionaries, and we've already had it set up, and we can get across the border once again. Praise you know, just pray the Lord give us souls. Praise That's the main thing, just give us souls. That's right. You know, we're taking the gift back, and we're feeding as we go. And each year at Thanksgiving, we try to feed at least 15,000 people a good Thanksgiving meal. And we try to do the same thing at Christmas time, a good, a good Christmas oh, meal. Yes. Just pray the Lord sends the funds in for that. And that he'll be with us and he'll give us the wisdom that we need while we're there to see those souls come to the, to the Lord. But this past year, since, since COVID hit, they couldn't get into churches for a long time, just like you're American. You couldn't go inside the church for a long time. But some of the missionaries were going out with other little villages. Because by going out to those little villages, they just got one of our missionaries comes to them back in the truck. He just tooted the horn a couple of times. He got up and started preaching. And people started gathering around and came to know the Lord. And since then, he's been going there every week. And more and more people are coming to know the Lord. Another one of the missionaries way up in the mountains of Haiti. They went to a village and, and had service. They told them after service, nobody has ever told us about the Lord. Nobody has ever come through there. And they want to know why. So why has nobody ever stopped me here and told us about the Lord? And the person that was telling my missionary this says, my dad passed away two weeks ago. And to the best of my knowledge, nobody ever mentioned him about the Lord. That we needed the Lord. You know, and since then, they've been going back right from that little village. And since then, the amount of souls that have been saved, they wanted a church. We have committed this year that we're going to build a church in that area of the mountains. You know, with the Lord's help, we've already committed to it. They've already purchased the land. They're just cleaning off the cactus of it, off of it now, getting ready to start service the, the church. You know, that's just a little bit of what the Lord's done. And like, last year we were here, I don't know if I mentioned anything about wells in Africa. Did I mention anything? All right, we were getting ready to start a well. This year, we just completed number four well. Amen. Last month. Amen. Number four well was just completed. Now I give God credit for that. Amen. And back, back in Haiti, we've got another well ready to start in Haiti now. It's quick as things settle down where they can get the gas to get it drilled. Amen. But the machine's already sitting on the spot where it's going to go. The missionary sent me pictures of it. He said, This is where the well's going to be. He's already got the machine sitting there. We just wait for things to settle down so that, that well can be drilled. You know, I thank God. That's just a little bit. That's just a little bit what he's done. But I thank God for all that he's done. All that he's allowed us to be a part of, all he's allowed God to be a part of. You know, you may not see it, but what y'all do, you may not know the results of it until you get to heaven, but I believe we're going to be amazed at, at the souls that have been touched by the offerings, by the messengers, by the gift bags, by, by feeding. When we have service with them, we always try to feed them. And we don't try, we do. We always feed them. Amen. Amen. You know, when you show them the love of God, when you show them the love of God, they won't listen to what you got to say. You give them something to fill their head with, they won't listen to what you got to say. On the, one of the wells, number three well in Africa, the third one we done, the missionary sent us back a picture of an older gentleman standing with a cane on a big walking stick. He said, for 40 years, we prayed for a well in our village. So we're walking 4.3 miles one way to get water. That means 4.3 miles that way, 4.3 miles. That's eight and a half miles, in case you don't think that is. Eight and a half miles to get water. See, so we've been praying for 40 years for a well. And he was thanking God. He said, thank you for building us a well. You know, God always answers a prayer. Amen. It may not be like that, but we think it should be. It took him 40 years to get it, but God supplied that. Day. Amen. And he was standing there, that big walking stick, thanking the Lord, because he answered that prayer for him. You know, God answers prayers for us all the time. And we fail to thank him. That's we right. fail to give him the praise, to give him the credit. For what he has already what he's already done in our lives. We take things for granted. I mess today, I'm gonna talk to someone about from the, the light in the midst of darkness. That's what I'm talking to you about. And I'm gonna talk about the children of Israel, how that they were still in bondage, and right before the Lord killed the firstborn of, of all the Egyptians, he sent darkness for three days on the Egyptians. If you read that little second text out of Exodus chapter ten. Verse 21 through 23. But that's where our text is coming. Before we get started, though, we're going to talk about people that live in darkness every day. Every day we look at people that 
not professing the Lord. They just live in the darkness from one, from one day to the next day. They don't know what to do. They're, they just live in the chaos. When you live in the darkness, you live in the chaos because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know which way to turn. Like man, I was talking about calling for prayer. He had said, I have no idea which way to turn. Everything's closing in on me. I just need prayer. I need to know there's light, there's hope at the end of the road. I know that there's hope that we can have hope. You know, but Jesus Christ, as I said a while ago, he's the only hope that we can ever have. He is the only hope we can ever have. In Exodus chapter 10, starting in verse number 21, if you stand for reading God's word, please. Exodus 10, verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Let's pray. Most kind of gracious heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your life that you've given her in our lives, Father. Thank you, Lord, for salvation. Thank you, Lord, because you came and died that we did have salvation. But we have to get to you help you tonight, Lord. You know my lips, Father, say what you have me to say. Lord, no more, no less, Father. Help me, Lord, to be in our perfect will. Lord God, we ask you, Lord, to touch the light of each one that's listening today, Lord, whether it be on Facebook or here in this building, Lord God, we ask you, Lord, that you convict that heart and the one that's dear self and save that soul, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, the Bible says, for three days, for three days, it was total darkness. It, it's, don't say it was total darkness. It says thick darkness. My first trip, I ever went to Haiti. We were sleeping with a bunch of up in the mountains. We were sleeping on the back of a flatbed truck, open truck. Didn't have a cover on, it was open truck. And that night, it was so dark, I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. Man. Star, you couldn't see the stars, you couldn't see the moon. But you, when you're dark like that, you can hear everything around you. And I, all night long, I'd hear something going around that truck. I couldn't tell what it was. I didn't know if it was a person or what it was. But all night long, I'd hear that. Kept waking up and go, what? What is that? Does somebody be concerned then? What is that? You know, but the Bible says the children of Israel, they had three days of thick darkness. My, my darkness that I had, as quick as it got daylight the next morning, my darkness was over with. But all that noise I was hearing around that truck, I woke up the next morning, and then it got daylight, I seen what it was, a donkey. That's what it was, it was going around and around that truck and right up inside of it. But I had no idea, because I couldn't see him at night. I just hear him bump the truck and you know, going around. Never, he never made any noise that I could figure out what it was. It's that bumping noise. It, you know, it gets your nerves on edge. When you can't see, you know something's there or somebody's there, and you can't see him, it gets you on edge. Now, I can just imagine how these people in Egypt, how they felt. It was total darkness. They couldn't see nothing. The lights went out like that. They couldn't light a lantern. They couldn't go draw water. They couldn't fix any food. You know, and back then, they always had a lot of kids. Can you imagine being in a house with a house full of kids, a house full of babies? And it's pitch black, you can't see nothing. And then babies are crying. You can't find them to feed them. You can't, you can't change their diapers. You know, not just, a, not just by being so dark, but just that chaos from the smell. Just by the smell and the rackets going on with the babies hollering. And the Bible says for three days you couldn't see no one. For three days they didn't go out of their house. They stayed in their dwellings for three days. Now, when it gets dark, the gentleman starts cooling off. Now, I, I got to think about this here. Three days of thick darkness, I believe it got cold. You know, I believe they were not only fearful because it was so dark, they couldn't see it. They couldn't find the land or a lot of torch. They couldn't get a fire started because they couldn't see anything. And I believe it got so cold they were shivering to death. Not just from the fear, but because of the cold. That's, that's what Steve believes. That they were just so so afraid. But the Bible says for three days they didn't see anything. But there's an answer. That's Jesus Christ. You know, it says the whole time they were dark, it says, but the children of Israel, they had light. They had light in their dwelling. That's what each one of us should have. If we've got the Lord on the inside, it don't matter how dark it gets on the outside. It don't matter what you may be going through. You got the Lord on the inside. His light on the inside should be shining through us. That the people in the lost and dark world can see. Jesus in us. They can say, well, there's somebody that's different. They, they don't act like we do. They live a different lifestyle than we do. They seem to have it made so easy. You know, Christian life's not easy. God didn't tell us to be easy life. He says without trial and tribulation. You know, even Jesus Christ when he was here on this earth, the devil tempted him for 40 days. 40 days the devil's tempted. You know, if the devil will tempt our Lord, if he tempt him, he surely don't tempt us. Right. Remember, Jesus Christ, because he's God, and because he, he is faithful, it was like we should be. We should be faithful. 
He, he rejected what the devil was tempting him with. The devil wanted, he just wanted him to just bow down before me. That's, that's all we got to do, bow down before me. If you bow before me, you don't have to go to the cross. Because I won the victory if you bow before me. But you know, Jesus Christ, he stood the ground. He said, I should have no God before me. You should not worship any God beside the Lord God. That's not a God with worship. You know, when the devil comes our way with temptations, he comes our way with trials. Those trials can be any kind of temptation. He, looking outside, I see lights outside. It's dark, but I can see the lights outside. When the church sign, the street lights, I can see the lights. You know, that's what our light should be. When the world says they should see that light, that light shining, there's something, something that we have that they do not have. You know, the Bible tells us when the whole time they were there, the children of Egypt, total darkness. But the children of Israel, they had lights in their dwelling. That's what we all got. We've got to have that light in our dwelling. Amen. But for three days, they didn't see anything. They didn't go anywhere. But the children of Israel, I believe those three days, the children of Israel, they were getting up. They were going and drawing water from the well. They were going back in their, to their house. They were cooking their meals. They were taking care of their children. They were doing their everyday activities other than being in bondage for the Egyptians. That's the only thing that was different with the children of Israel. They didn't have to be pressured into all the work they were having to do. But they were able to relax for three days. I believe they were able to relax. For three days, they were just taking care of spending time with their family, spending time getting closer together. You know, the Lord done that to prepare them, to help prepare them to get ready to leave. They were starting to work in unison. They were just communicating together. They were fellowshipping together. I believe they were fellowshipping together. It's because just a little, little bit after that, you know, the Lord tells Moses, he said, you go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. You know, Pharaoh wouldn't let him go. He says, you go tell the children of Israel. He says, I want you to kill that land, that spotless land. I want you to put that blood on the doorpost. He said, and I want them to eat it. I want them to roast it. I don't want them to eat raw. I want them to be roasted. And I want them to eat it with their bones girded about, the shoes on their feet, because they're leaving Egypt tonight. You know, I, I believe that if the children of Israel had not done what Moses said, what God told Moses to tell them, and put that blood on the doorpost, the side, and the top, I believe that death angel would pass by. I think he would have killed every one of them. The first one in every house didn't have the blood. The Bible says when he saw the blood, he passed it and passed by. But every Egyptian's house, the first born, whether it be beast or, or man, was killed as the death angel passed by. You know, I, I have a big imagination. I like to think when I read God's word about how the Bible don't tell us everything. It tells us how we should live. But I like to think while this is going on, I can see a little boy, an Egyptian boy, or Israelite boy. He goes to me and sees Daddy putting that blood on the doorpost. And I, I'm saying, Daddy, why are you putting that on the door? You know, you're spearing blood on it. Why are you doing that, Daddy? Because that's what God wants us to do with the death angel will pass by tonight. When he passes by, he'll see that blood, he's going to pass by tonight. But why is it far, Daddy? Because if the blood's not applied, he's going to kill the firstborn. But Daddy, I'm the firstborn. I'm the firstborn. Is it going to pass by unless it's going to kill me? He's no, we're doing what the Lord tells us to do. We're putting that blood on the doorpost. Top and on the sides. The blood's there. The blood's been applied. But I see this little boy. He's laying down. And I'm here listening to those cries from the Egyptians. The screams that are going on. Getting closer and closer and closer to his house. And I believe, I, I can see he gets up and runs to mom daddy. Are you sure that blood's going to work? Are you sure it's still there? You know when the Lord cleanses your heart? When he saves you? He puts his blood, covers up your sins. He doesn't wash away. Did not wash it. Jesus Christ died one time. That's all it took. Back in the Old, Old Testament, the Bible days, they had offered a sacrifice every year just to cover your sins for that year. But when Jesus hung on that cross, he shed his blood, it lasts forever. And he has to cover your heart. He don't, he don't bring those sins up anymore. Now the devil, his job is to come back and torment your mind. That's what he wants. He wants to torment your mind. He wants to bring up all your sins that you've done in the past and say, you, you did this. God ain't going to forgive something like that. Right. You know, my Bible tells me that God will forgive anything. It says, for who, whosoever's called upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It don't say whosoever's called upon the name of the Lord might be saved. Possibilities they could be saved, but you shall be saved if you call upon the name of the Lord. And I believe that because it's in God's Word. Whatever God says, I believe. You know, some of the devil, he's going to affect that mind. He says, no. Like he told Eve. And Adam in the garden, he told me, he was a, the Lord didn't really mean what he said on that. He meant this. But he means exactly what he says. Right. His word don't change for nobody. No, right. It don't change for me. It won't change for you. Right. His word is exactly the same as it was 2,000 years ago. It's still the same word. The Bible tells us he'll never leave us, never forsake us. He's the holy God. 
And because he's holy, he wants us to be holy. Does that mean you're never going to sin when you come to know the Lord? No. But that don't mean we should be trying to live this thing. We should be doing our very best. The very best that we can to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Keeping away from sin. We should shine. We see sin coming, we should get away from it. The Bible says, for every temptation on the man, God has already made a way to escape. But we've got to look for that way. We, we've got to look for it. Then we've got to take that way. So many times, even as a Christian, so many times, we don't take that way to escape. You know, but Jesus Christ gave us a way that we can escape hell. When he hung on that cross, he gave his life. He said it's finished. It was finished. All we have to do is believe in him. Ask him to forgive us and come in our heart. It was, it's truly finished. When he done that, he made a way that we could escape hell. Just by believing on him. That's what he wants us to do. He wants to keep our faith in him. And I keep, I keep wanting to go back to the children of Israel. They had light in their dwelling. Children of God, we should have light in our dwelling. No matter what kind of... What kind of day we may be having? Be having a bad day? Be having a good day? You know, the Bible doesn't talk about it. He talks about a lot, a lot. But he don't talk about a lot that you can just cover up. He talks about in Matthew. He talks about lighting a candle and hiding under a bushel. But you put it up so everybody can see the light. That's what he wants us to do. He don't talk about us just putting that light off and on when we want to. When he's inside, that light should be shining all the time. Amen. Not just go over and flip the switch and cut it off because you don't want nobody to know that you're a Christian. Because on your worst day, that light's still supposed to be on. On your best day, that life's still on. People look at you, the life that you live, and say, well, either he's a Christian, or if that's the way a Christian is, I'm just as good as hell. They say one of, the two things, one of those two things all the time. Either he's a Christian, by the way he lives, or if he's a Christian, I'm just as good as he is. You know, which way do you live? Do you live a lie that people can see Jesus in you? Or do you try to hide that lie under a bushel? For a long time, when Steve was younger, I'm talking about this Steve. When he was younger, he tried to hide his light under the bush. I got saved when I was a young boy. And when I first got saved, I'm, I'm sure I was just like me and you were. When you first got saved, you were really on fire. You wanted everybody to know what the Lord done for you. Yeah. But as time went by, and I got in my teenage years, and then hanging with those teenage boys, and my life started getting not as bright as it should be. I, was, I tried to hide under the bush, just like I still go here and with my friends and still go to church to serve the Lord. You know, I believe personally that a lot of people are in that same boat. But you know, when you really make a determination that you want God first, it doesn't matter who's around. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter where you're going. You're still going to live that Christian life. You're not going to try to get over here and hang around with the world. Oh, yeah. The Bible says come out from among the world. It says come out, come out and be separate people is what the Bible says. He wants to come out in the world. He wants to live a holy life because he is holy. He says, be holy for I am holy. Holy He wants us to live that same kind of life that he lives. Does that mean you're never going to mess up? It does not mean that. Because you are going to mess up because you have flesh and blood. You have that sin nature inside you. All because of Adam's sin went back in the garden. We're all born with that sin nature. But Jesus Christ, when he hung on that cross and was accepted in our heart, we now have that We have that blood applied and we don't have to live that sin nature. We can we may tempt you with it every day, but we need to keep our eyes on the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. Because we know the son of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1, chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily set us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. This is the part I want to get to. Who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. That's what we've got to do. We've got to endure that shame. We've got to. No matter what kind of persecution we want to do, we've got to keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. It says for joy. It says for the joy that was set before him. Now, I don't, I don't believe the joy of the Lord hanging on that cross and being nailed to that cross. I don't believe, I don't believe he was shouting because they were in that spirit through his side. I don't believe he done that. But he knew he had to do that because he didn't hope for me and you. He would have to give his life. And I don't, I don't believe he was forced to do it. I believe he volunteered. You know, when the Lord God sent him down here for God's love of the world, that he gave his only God's son, he freely gave him to us. Right. And we can do whatever we want to with him. I believe he, he freely 
came down here. But God said, I'm going to let you go down and you become the sacrifice of him. I'll be his volunteer. But just what God, our Father, I'll be I'll do that. I'll do that because I want people to enjoy life with you and me. I believe that's what he wants. He wants us to have eternal life with him. But there's only two places that you're going to go when you die. When you take that last breath, you're going to wait for your next breath to either be in heaven or it's going to be in hell. But we have to make that decision for ourselves. Nobody can make that decision for you. We have to make that decision on it for ourselves. You know, and I pray my prayer today would be that each one of us, whether it be on Facebook or the internet watching or in this building, would make a decision that I'm going to follow God. No matter what may come my way, no matter what kind of trial I may be going through, no matter how difficult life may get, I'm going to follow God. He is my Lord. Amen. He is my Savior. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, because you said you never leave us or forsake us, Lord God. You be with us, Lord. You be with us all the way, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you help us, Lord God. Touch that, Lord, Lord does not know you, Lord. Lord, let me say something, Lord God, that would encourage the heart. Lord, that surrender all to you, Lord, that put their trust in you, Lord. Realizing, Lord, their only hope is in Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, you are our hope. You are our salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
the church prayer list is several watching Peggy Bridges, Donald Staples, and Francis Staples, Jennifer Cap, and then uh, uh, got regular listeners that listen to us from Terry Week watching from Texas, improving from a back surgery, Terry Don White from Colorado with us again tonight, uh, recovering from uh, surgery they had. Let's just believe God for these, if you would, brother, just text him all your preaching. Amen. That's for all of us. Most kind of grace, Father. Father, we love you. Lord, we lift up each one of you as a professor. Lord, we lift up each one of us in this building. Father, you see every need that's represented. Dear Father, we know, God, you are an awesome powerful God. You're an awesome God. You're a big God. Lord, we know you're big enough to supply every need we have. We know, Lord God, that you are able. Lord, that you are willing. And we, we believe in you, Father God, that you will come from our sin. Dear God, we ask the Lord to lift up each one. Father, no matter what they're going through, God, you give them the grace that they need for this hour. Lord, you give them the peace, that you give them the comfort, that you give them the happiness, Lord, that they need, Father. Lord, give them the healing, Father, that they need. Thank you, Lord, because you've already started the healing process and some of these requests. Father God, we ask the Lord to complete the job, Father, that we know that you are able. Lord, for those that are lost, Father God, we ask you, God, to reach down, Lord, touch that heart. Lord, you let us surrender to you, Lord. Let the day be that day, Father. It would be the greatest day in our life, Father, to accept you as our personal Lord and Savior. Father God, we ask you, Lord, to be with each one. Father God, you know everything. Help us, Lord, just realize, dear God, all we've got to do is just look at you and talk to you, Lord, just to talk to you, Father, because you're the greatest Lord. friend, Lord. Love and sister man, your father God, we ask you, Lord, Lord God, help us to know, realize that you just want to be our friend, God, we talk to you, Lord, and we get our God, our God, sister and your Lord. Lord. God, I touch all the Lord you sent from. Lord, 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 Lord
but God if it does and I just know where I'm at tonight in you Lord and sheltered in your arms and I pray that you touch us all tonight as we leave here and they, as they go back home to rest a flat rock close to ash for God that you take care of them Lord keep your hand on them God I just believe you're going to do it Henderson be off you're going to do that God angels is back all the down the road no matter what happens that they're covered when they leave Sunday to go on a mission trip, God, after church. God, let angels get in every vessel they in, Lord. When they leave here in, if they're all driving all the way, if they're flying any of it, when they go through that border, just throw things back out of the way, Lord. Let the angel of the Lord that encampeth around about those that fear him just part the waters. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, take your way tonight. We thank you for it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Thank you for streaming with us. Good night, everybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Be sure to thank them for coming tonight. Don't let them get out of here. So you tell them you're praying for them. You're going to be with them. In your prayers, you can't go to Mexico with them, son. You can go with us in prayer. Praise the Lord. As we reference the Lord and bring this portion of the service to a close, we just thank you for coming. We've got one other thing. We missed Sunday. We want to recognize a couple of birthdays this week. All right. That's all right. Don't leave yet. Dale and Eason. Jimmy Eason's Jimmy's granddaughter. That's Jimmy's granddaughter. Jimmy's granddaughter. Ron and Ann. Ron and Ann. Happy birthday, Ann. Oh, we got one. Somebody got one. Help me first. All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.